uh, a very good evening uh, to all uh, the brothers and sisters in christ so last week uh, we studied about uh, tongues uh, and uh, miracles so we saw actually what is the real meaning of uh, uh, tongues and uh, what is the difference between the miracles that are happening uh, now and that actually happened uh, in the jesus christ days so uh, we saw uh, clearly uh, that uh, there is a lot of difference between those things uh so today we're going to see a new subject about three r west uh kamal brother roshni sister also welcome jai masi so today we're going to see a subject about uh, harvest okay as soon as we mention harvest uh, what is that uh, comes to our mind if you see you see there are three things that comes to our mind there is a field that has been sown and uh, the fruitage uh, has come now and now the separation has to take place you see and uh, the gathering of the fruits uh, has to take place and later on the burning of the refuse uh, the waste uh, after gathering all the fruits uh, has to take place so in the harvest uh, whenever we see in the harvest these things things are very important you see these three things has to happen in the harvest okay now do, did jesus mention about harvest anywhere in the bible if you see yes jesus mentioned about the harvest in matthew 9 chapter 37 and 38 matthew 9 chapter 37 and 38 uh, can somebody read then said he uh, then said he unto his disciples the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest very good brother. thank you so he said jesus the harvest is plenteous but the laborers are few pray for the lord of the harvest that he may send forth laborers into his harvest now, when Jesus spoke about the harvest, did Jesus have any field? Did he do any sowing? Did he have any wheat field where a lot of wheat had grown and now it had come to the fruitage and disciples were not sufficient that he should go to the field and do the harvest? No. We all know that Jesus did not have any wealth or any assets in this world. You see, he did not have a place uh, for to lay his head. Uh. Therefore, today we are going to see three harvest uh, mentioned in the Bible. One is in the Jewish harvest, Jewish age harvest. The other is the gospel age harvest. And the final one is the millennial age harvest. Uh. Millennial age harvest. So, these three harvest we are going to see. Okay. In these three ages, in what time period does the harvest happen? Does it happen in the beginning of the age? Or does it happen in the center of the age? Or does it happen in the last of the age? What does Jesus say? Let us read Matthew 13, 39. Uh, Anil Buddha, can you read Matthew 13, 39? The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. See, the harvest is the end of the world. That means the harvest takes place at the end of each and every age. So we need to keep this one in mind that in three ages, three harvest takes place means it happens, it takes place at the end of each and every age. Okay, now let us read one by one. Jewish age harvest, gospel age harvest and the millennial age harvest. First, regarding the Jewish age harvest, it is given to us in Matthew 3rd chapter verse 12. Matthew 3rd chapter verse 12. Joel Buddha, can you read Matthew 3.12? Whose fan is in his hand and he will Truly, pours his floor and gather his weight into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable 
fire. So here, the first harvest uh, is mentioned, uh, you see, that uh, whose fan is in his hand, will thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat into his uh, garner and burn the chaff in unquenchable fire. So these words are told by John the Baptist. We all know very well that when John the Baptist, you see, he came in preached, he prepared the way for our Lord Jesus Christ to continue his ministry. And uh, he was giving a baptism of repentance for the people who repented from the sin. And as he was giving baptism, there were many Pharisees, Sadducees, uh, you see, who were coming uh, to take baptism from uh, John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, uh, seeing them, addressed them saying, who has, the, you see, warned you to flee from the war? You see, so you repent uh, and bring forth uh, the fruits of uh, repentance. Uh, you see, was the thing that uh, John the Baptist preached. Uh, let us read Matthew 3rd chapter, verses 7 to 9. Uh, Muna sister, can you read Matthew 3, 7 to 9? But when he saw, he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his bap baptism, he said unto them, O generation of pipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come, Bring forth uh, therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves. We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of those stones to raise up children unto Abraham. See, he addresses them, calling them as brood of vipers. That means your generation of vipers, not the generation of Abraham. Because Abraham was uh, famous for faith. And who are as uh, the faith of Abraham, they are called as the uh, children of Abraham. But here, the people of Israel really lack that, uh, the faith of Abraham. Hence, uh, John the Baptist saying, uh, the Jewish people called them as brood of vipers. Uh, and you are of your father, the devil. Okay, now verse 10. Uh, sister, please continue. Verse 10. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is worn down and cast into the fire. And uh, he continues to tell, now the axe is laid down to the root. The axe is put to the root, not to the stem. You see, if it is put to the stem or the trunk, what will happen? The akin tree will sprout. But this time, John the Baptist clearly tells that uh, you people have to bring forth the fruits of repentance uh, or else uh, it is very short in time that God will cut off, uh, you see, and throw into fire. You know, this tree, you see, is not literal tree that God is going to cut. Uh, it is actually representing the nation of Israel. You see, in the Bible, you see, the writers are compared to a tree. We know very well Psalms first chapter, you see, one to three. It says, no, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of ungodly. How will he be? He will be like a tree that is planted by the waters. So tree is a righteous person. So Israel as a nation, there was a righteous people. They were justified by the sacrifices that they were giving continually to God. You see, hence... From the tree, the nation of Israel, God expected the fruits. But unfortunately, you see, they were not sufficient fruits. Hence, John the Baptist is telling, every tree that doesn't bear fruit, it shall be cut down. From the root itself, that means, and cut down to put the fire means water. Not little fire. As the tree is a symbolic meaning, cutting is a symbolic meaning, Similarly, putting into fire is also symbolic meaning. So here fire means, you see, the wrath of God. In the Bible, you see, God's anger is compared to fire. Let us read Zephaniah 3, 8. Zephaniah, 3rd chapter, 8 verse. Uh, Romans sister, can you read? Zephaniah 3, 8. 
Therefore, therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I raise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather all the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indi indi what is the word indignation here? sister indignation indignation even all my uh, parents anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy see god's wrath god's jealousy is here compared to the fire hence uh, you see john the baptist uh, you see clearly warned them you see who has warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come therefore this uh, fire is not a literal fire the jewish nation was compared to a tree if it doesn't bring fruit it will be cut off and totally destroyed okay now read matthew 311 matthew 311 uh, Rossi sister or Kamal brother, can you read? I indeed baptize you with water of to repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than, mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. See, here, after telling all these things, John the Baptist clearly tells the work of our Lord. What will the Lord do? He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me, Jesus is mightier than me. He will baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit and fire. So everybody thinks uh, that uh, Holy Spirit uh, uh, baptism and the fire baptism are one and the same. You see, and they pray to the Lord, Oh Lord, pour your Holy Spirit, pour your fire upon me. Let us uh, be anointed with thy fire, the revival fire. Okay. Now, so if you see in the Bible, what happens uh, when a person is totally immersed in water baptism, he is completely into the water and is completely wet in the water. That means he is totally immersed in the water. He is completely soaked in the water. That is water baptism. Okay? Now, uh, what is the meaning and what happens if somebody is baptized with the Spirit? Uh, he is anointed with the Holy Spirit. Uh, he is filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you see, again, he is immersed in the Holy Spirit. You see, so that is the meaning of uh, baptism of uh, Spirit. Now, similarly, then what should happen if a person is baptized in fire? That means you should be completely immersed in fire. Now, what will happen if a person is completely immersed in fire? You tell me, if a person is completely immersed in water, it will be completely wet. If a person is completely immersed in the Holy Spirit, he will fill with the Holy Spirit. Similarly, if somebody is baptized or immersed in the fire, what will happen to them? They will be totally destroyed. That is what actually John the Baptist was telling. Jesus is coming very shortly and he will, you see, do these two works. Anoint one group of people with the baptism of the uh, Holy Spirit and anoint uh, other group of people with the baptism of fire. So, what is this baptism of fire? And what is this uh, baptism of uh, water yeah, and uh, Holy Spirit? Let us read verse 12, Matthew 3.12. Uh, Matthew 3.12. Surita, sister, can you read Matthew 3.12? Whose fan is in his hand, and he will truly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the calf with unquenchable fire. Hmm. See, Jesus is going to come and do this work, it seems. 
John the Baptist says, whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly prick the floor. He will gather the wheat into his barn and burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. So here, John the Baptist tells that as Jesus comes, he is going to do a separation work. He is going to gather the wheat, you see, and he is going to gather the chaff and burn it. And for this one, Jesus is having a fan in his hand. So we can see that image. You see, uh, I don't know about your place. In India, we have a lot of places uh, where these things, uh, where the uh, wheat and chaff are separated on the road itself. Uh, you see, they take the wheat, uh, which is heavy, which is filled with granules, uh, and uh, they just uh, uh, fan it to the wind uh, and the road. Uh, and what happens? Uh, you see, the heavy wheat grain falls there itself. But the chaff, which is just only an outward uh, covering, it falls very far away. That is also a heap. So this is how the separation of the fruit and uh, covering the chaff is done. Now, did Jesus uh, literally do this one? No. This is a symbolic meaning. That means when Jesus came at the first advent, uh, there were two classes of people. One class of people was like the wheat, who were really dedicated, who had weight in them. You see, they are the real Israel people. But when Jesus came, there was also duplicate Israel in, you see, duplicate Israelites were there. They were just having a form of appearance. They tend to appear as a real Israelite people, but actually, they did not have that real Israelites character. They are compared to the chaff. You see? See, read, Jesus tells us about this one. In John 4, chapter 35 to 38. John 4, chapter 35 to 38. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read? So not ye, there are yet four months, and then come at the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And mm. herein mm. is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth, I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye are entered into their labors. You see, I will send you where? Where others have bestowed the labor. This sowing among the Jewish nation happened when the people of Israel came out of Egypt. God's law was sowed in their heart. A lot of prophets, judges were sent so they may grow and give forth the fruit. So Jesus came exactly at the end of the Jewish age, at the harvest. When he came, there were two classes of people among Israel. One class of people were the zealous, uh, the Jewish people. They are the real wheat. You see? But uh, there was other class of people also who were just only outward, uh, you see, Jewish people. Let us read. Romans 9 chapter 6 to 7. Romans 9 chapter verse 6 to 7. Um, Joel brother, can you read? Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Huh? See? It says, For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. How is it possible? If somebody is born in Israel, then he is Israel. No. It says, No, no, no. It is not like that. Just because you are born in Israel, you don't become an Israel. What does it mean? That means to become an Israel, there is this particular character required. Not just you be born in the land of Israel. That is not sufficient. You see, there is a particular character. What is that character? The faith of Abraham. 
that was required for you to become a Jewish people. But uh, when Christ came at the first advent, the Jewish people, some people only had this faith. Hence, uh, Jesus saw Nathaniel and said, you are the Israelite indeed. Read John 147. Amar brother, can you read brother? John 147. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israel is Israelite indeed in whom is no guilt. Hmm, Nathanael, you see, Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile, is so very pure. He was uh, the real wheat. Such type of people, there were many in Israel. These are the real wheat whom Jesus actually sought. But they were chaff also. Who are the chaff? Only outward. See, if you take the chaff, only the covering will be there. But inside, no grains. No wheat at all. These are only the outward Jewish people. Who are they? These are none other than the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the lawyers, the priest and the high priest. Read Matthew 23rd chapter 14 and 15. Matthew 23, 14 and 15. Kamal brother, can you read? Matthew 23, 14 and 15. Kamal brother, you're there? Or uh, Roshan Ishtar, you're there? Can you read Matthew 23, 14, 15? Okay, brother, I will read. Okay, sir. How oh, up to you, scribes and uh, pharisees, hypocrites, uh, for ye devour, withdraw houses, and for operations make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. How oh, up to you, scribes and uh, pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and a land to make one uh, pro, pro light and when he is made ye make him truefold more the child of hell than yourself mm, you see who unto you the scribes and pharisees hypocrites hypocrites means what uh, just only for outward sake they are doing all these things they tend to do big big prayers you see visit the widows Comfort them, but actually did not have that love at all. You see, hence they are called as hypocrites. You see, and they were so cunning that they had taken the understanding of the law from the people of Israel. When our Jesus expounded them, then only they began to realize so many things are there in the word of God. This understanding key was taken by the Pharisees and Sadducees. They never allowed other people to listen to Jesus. Neither did they listen. Read Luke eleven fifty two. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Luke eleven fifty two? Amar brother, Romi brother, Romi sister. Who unto you, lawyers? For ye have taken away the key of knowledge ye entered not in yourself and then that were entering in ye uh, in in red ah, you see they never enter into the kingdom of God neither allow other people to also and therefore these are the only outward people and Jesus clearly you see told them you are like whitewashed sepulcher you are like a couple who are washed only outside, but inside is full of filthiness. These were the chaff that were there during the first event of Jesus. Matthew 23, 25. Uh, Anil Buddha, can you read Matthew 23, 25? Woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of cup and of the platter, but within they are full of 
extortion and access. You see, the only outside of the cup is cleaned. You see, if you go to the hotel, no? Only outside cup will be shining. But inside, if you see, after drinking the tea or coffee, it will be full of filthiness. That was the way the Pharisees and Sadhisis were there. Only outward. Read Matthew 23, 27 also, brother. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. 23, 27, brother. Correct, correct, you're reading. Uh, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye like unto whited sepulchres, sepul 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 which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. Ah, you see, Pharisees and Pharisees, like whitewashed grave in India, you see what they do now? Huh? They whitewash the grave. They put paint, polish it every year, once a year. It looks very bright, very clean. But if you dig inside, is it clean inside? It is only full with filthiness. That was the condition of the Pharisees. They did only to show off. Whenever they gave an offering, they made sure that everybody saw it. Whenever they prayed, they made sure that everybody observed them. They used to make very grand and you beautiful place, very pleasant to everybody's ears. This was the outward uh, Jewish people. So Jesus had a fan in his hand uh, to separate them. What is this fan? This is the word of God. When Jesus spoke the word of God, the truth, this truth separated these two classes of people. See, this is clearly happened when Jesus first time preached in the temple. Let us read what happened first time when he preached in the temple. Luke 4, 28 and 30. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read Luke 4, 28 and 30? And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him in onto the brow of, of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down uh, headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. Good. Read verse 22 also, Buddha. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? Yes. So here you see, first time when Jesus preached in the temple, everybody appreciated him. Verse 22. What wonderful words he's speaking. Is it not the son of Joseph? But as Jesus began to continue to speak more in-depth truth, the people began so wild. You see, from verse 28 to 30, it says, they were filled with wrath. They thought of G pushing Jesus from the threshold of the hill and kill him. That was the division. One group of people accepted him, other group of people rejected him. And when someone came to persecute him, Jesus did not take the beating, sir. He just passed away in the midst of them. He escaped. You see, so many people tell, oh, if somebody persecutes, persecutes if somebody comes and hits us, we should take nice beatings. No, no, no. We should try to escape from the situation. That is the wise thing we need to do. What does Jesus say? Be you wise as serpents. Harmless as doves, so you need to be very careful. Read, one person, one group of people, they accepted Christ, but other group of people did not accept Christ. They rejected Jesus Christ. Let us read John 7, 46 and 48. Uh, Munna sister, can you read John 7, 46 to 48? The officer answered, Never man is speak like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye, are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed on him? You see, the uh, soldiers who went to arrest Jesus, they did not arrest Jesus. Sir. They came back. They said, What have you done? He is speaking like never man spake. He is so beautiful. He is so speaking so excellently. We can't arrest him just like that. What did the Pharisees say? Are you also deceived? That means what? Some people accepted Christ. Some people rejected Christ. 
Read one more verse, sister. John 12, chapter 42 and 43, sister. Uh, Munaster, John 12, chapter 42 and 43 also. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of man more than the praise of God. You see, but many of the chief rulers believed him, but uh, they did not uh, openly declare because of the Pharisees. Because if they accept Christ before everybody, the Pharisees would cast them out of the temple because they loved more praises of man than the appreciation of God. So these two people were there, these two group people. So one group of people were anointed with the Holy Spirit. That is the wheat. You see, the wheat class of people were anointed with the God's Holy Spirit. And the Pentecost, we know very well. But what happened to the Pharisees? They were burned with fire means when Israel was destroyed in 70 AD, these also suffered a very, very much tribulation. You see, Jesus said and warned about this one also. And Apostle Paul also tells her. Okay, let us read only one verse. First Thessalonians, 2nd chapter, 15 and 16. First Thessalonians, 2nd chapter, 15 and 16. Romy sister, can you read? First Thessalonians 2, 15 and 16. Or Amar brother? Any of you can read? First Thessalonians, second chapter, 15 and 16. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. And 16 as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Forbidding us to speak to the uh, Gentiles and that they might be saved to feel of their sin always. For the word is come upon them to uttermost. Mm -hmm. See? The wrath of God is come upon Israel unto the uttermost. This literally happened during 70 AD. The Jerusalem city was completely destroyed and burned with fire. All the Israelites were scattered and some people were taken in captivity. Jesus had clearly warned them in Luke 21, 22, 23 also. You see, when the Jesus was carrying the cross, the women were weeping. What did Jesus tell to them? Woman! Weep not for me. Weep for yourself. Behold, the day is going to come. You see, the tribulation that is going to come upon you. Think about that one and weep for yourself. Not for me. That's what the trials and tribulations that came upon Jesus' uh, people, the Jewish people. Okay. So this is the Jewish age harvest. You see, the two groups were separated. One group were anointed with God's Holy Spirit. Other people were Completely destroyed by God's wrath. Okay. Now let us come to the gospel age harvest. This gospel age harvest is mentioned to us in Matthew 13, chapter 24 to 30. Hashish, brother, can you read Matthew 13, chapter 24 to 30, brother? Okay. Another parable put it forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in its field, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, when appeared the tears also, so the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence they then had it tears? He said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servants said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Lest while he gather up the tares, he root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather it together first the tares and bind them in bundles to bond them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Mm. So this is a parable we know very well, the parable of the wheat and tares. That was the parable of the wheat and 
chaff. Now, this is a parable. Parable means what? This is not a literal statement at all. This is a symbolic statement. And Jesus himself gives us a clear explanation of this parable in verse 37 to 43. Let us read. Gobal brother, please read Matthew 13 chapter 37 to 43 brother. He answered and said unto them, He that sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned, burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that often, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be welling and gnashing of teeth, then shall the righteous sign forth as the son in the kingdom of the father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Very good, brother. So, here Jesus himself clearly tells us, uh, you see, the man that to sow the seed is the son of man. You see, and uh, you see, the seed is the word of God. And when did he begin to sow? He sowed in his field. And Jesus explains in the parable that, uh, you see, the field is the world. You see, when, uh, you see, Jesus preached, he sowed the seed everywhere. You see, that is the word of God. But when the servant slept, uh, what do you mean by the servant sleeping? Yeah. You see, that means when all the apostles uh, who were leaving, the church was in a healthy condition. But once they slept in death, uh, you see, we, we remember the subject of a soul in the Bible, the sleep uh, uh, is compared to a death, a death is compared to the sleep. So when all the, you see, servant slept means when all the apostles and all the faithful people you just they slept in death. They died. What happened? The enemy took uh, a upper hand uh, and he began to sow. You see the tears among the wheat. You see, dear brethren, the Satan he began to work uh, and he began to sow. You see the tears among the wheat. He did not sow anywhere else, dear brethren. Where this uh, keep it in your mind very clearly. And Jesus explains the parable saying the wheat are the children of God. And who are the tares? The children of the devil. Now where did the Satan sow? The, you see, tares, he did not go and sow in different places. No, 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 no. He sowed in the same place where actually all the apostles already sowed. That means he sowed the false doctrines among the Christian itself. Jesus and the apostles preached the true doctrine and sowed all over the world. Now, where did Satan sow the seed? He did not go and sow the seed in any, you say, temple or mosque. No, he sowed in the same place when the enemy slept, in the same field, in the same place, among the Christians only, he sowed the false doctrines. So, what happened? You see, morning uh, they woke up and saw, what has grown up? Are there tears? The servant's question, Lord, isn't it that we sowed the seed? How is it uh, that today everything has become tears? Uh, that is the condition of Christianity today. You see, originally, the God's intention to for sowing the truth, uh, preaching the word of God, uh, preaching the gospel all over the world was only to gather the true Christians, the faithful Christians. Uh, but today, what has happened? In all the world, wherever you go, only false Christians are the majority one. This all began during the days of Constantine. You see, Constantine was a Roman emperor. He got converted to Christianity only for benefit's sake. Since then, what happened? All the false doctrines began to come into the church. Like what? We have seen so many subjects almost nearly. You see, huh? so, seven to eight months are over. Hell, soul, you see, Good Friday, the Lord's memorial. When do we need to take it? The word bishop, with the word father, reverend, you see, and Easter, you see, and the Trinity, you see, tongues, miracles. So many subjects we are seeing, in all the subjects we are seeing, that what all they are doing is false. 
You see, even uh, denying uh, themselves and carrying the cross and following Jesus, uh, they take it literally, then denying themselves, they think that they left uh, marriage that is sufficient. They don't marry. They think that is denying themselves. Uh, and putting the cross means what? Uh, just put a, a cross uh, chain, a dollar, uh, for your, or else put a cross symbol over the gown and just walk. This is not literally, dear brethren. So what has happened? This uh, wheat field has become a tear field. And so if somebody tells, uh, yeah, if somebody asks, no, oh, what are you? I am a Christian. If you tell, everybody will see cheaply. Why? Because uh, Christianity today has become a very corrupt religion. Whoever sins every way, Whoever tells lies, whoever drinks nicely, whoever smokes nicely, whoever has a lot of relationship with everybody. Eh? After doing all this sin, who goes to the father and confesses his sin, he is called as a Christian. Correct? Huh? So today in the world, if you tell that we are Christians, what will they tell? How much they paid you? Huh? Why did you get converted? Isn't it? Huh? Huh? And those who don't wear proper clothes, they are called as Christians. Why? Because this wheat field has become a tear field. There is no wheat at all. Wheat is very rare. See this field? You see? You can see the brown grains. Those are the wheat. But you can see the green, green color. No? Those are the taste. You can't make the differentiation at all. Everybody looks like the same. Similarly, huh? the Christians today, they are the same. There is no differentiation. They have the Bible in their hand. It is the same Bible what we use also. But uh, they are preaching. The truth is different. Uh, they too have a Bible study. But how is their Bible study? It is very diluted. Nobody should get any doubts. Nobody should get any questions. Only entertainment. You see? Lot of programs are there. Lot of entertainments are there. Joy. Happiness. Enjoyment. Songs. You see, Gijila Jila, oh, hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord. Only those things. What about the truth? The word of God itself is not there. Hence, what happened? The wheat field has completely become the tear field. So if you see, what is there? Only, only tears are there. So we are going to find the wheat. Uh -huh. How do you find it? There is a particular character for a wheat compared to the tears. What is it? You can see that uh, left side picture which is a green one, that is a taste. And the golden brown on the right side is the wheat. You can see the wheat grains are heavy, they are bowed down. What do you mean by that one? You see, the real Christians are so much faithful to the Lord, they are entirely dedicated to the Lord, they have so much of weight in them. You see, they have the stuff, you see, the Christ likeness in them. They are so heavy compared to the worldly Christians. They are heavy in the Lord. They surrender to the word of God. You see, when the wind blows, you know what happens? They surrender to the word of God. When doctrine comes, when the question of doctrine comes, you should surrender to the word of God. That is the real character of a Christian. That is how we can identify is a tear or is a wheat. Now tear, what will they do? If you tell the truth to them, your tear will argue. No, this is like this, this is like that. Only argument, no understanding of the word of God. Simply keep on arguing unnecessary things. Simply, simply. Why? No, no use. No meaning at all. Why? Because they want to win. That's all. That is the differentiation between the tears and the wheat. The wheat, accept. Hear, think, ponder, realize and accept the word of God. See the differentiation. You see, the between the wheat and the tears. You see? Let us read a few verses. Ephesians 4.14. Ephesians 4.14. Uh, Joel Buddha, can you read Ephesians 4.14? That we henceforth be no, no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wine of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Hmm. You see? What does it say? It says they are tossed here and there, to and fro, but every wind of doctrine, when the wind blows, what will happen to the tears? You see? 
They shake here, there. You see, we should not be like that. When somebody preaches a false doctrine, we should stand. Stand for the Lord. Surrender only to the Lord. But these days are not like this. Today they will be here. Tomorrow there. Day after tomorrow. Again they will come. Again they will go. You see, these are not the real Christians. These are the tears. No other real Christians. Who are the real wheat? Isaiah 66.2. Anil brother, read. Isaiah 66.2. For all those things had time and made, and all those things have been, said the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. Uh, I will look to him whom? Whom shall God look? Not only to the poor, not only to the contrite heart. Today, many Christians are very poor, very contrite, are they, they weep and cry to the Lord, Oh Lord, Amen, Hallelujah, please, I beg you. But, there's a last important word, it says, who tremble at my word. That is very, very important, dear brethren. Many can weep, many can cry, but if you don't, don't have the trembling at the word of God, sundering to the word of God, we can't be true Christians at all. See the comparison of King Saul and King David. Saul, he wept, but he did not repent properly in his heart. But David, as soon as God mentioned, you are the sinner, immediately on the spot he said, I am the sinner, God. Please forgive me. But Saul, he argued. That is the difference between the wheat and the tears. Now, huh? what did Jesus say? Uh, what did the servants ask? Master, shall we go and uproot it now only? No, no, don't do it. If you go and uproot it now only, even the wheat also will come. Leave it till the time of the harvest. Hence, uh, God permitted it. Dear yeah, brethren, God permitted the false Christians, the false doctrines to come into the church because God knew very well that there is going to be time for the harvest. In the harvest, he is going to do the separation. Now, Huh? When is the harvest going to take place? Sir? You see, the harvest is going to take place at the Lord's second coming. We are living in that harvest. You see, uh, read Revelation 14, chapter 14 to 16. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read Revelation 14, chapter 14 to 16? And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one uh, sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his hand a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust, thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was ripe. You see, trust in the sickle, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So this is a symbol of Jesus at the return of the second advent. We are living in that day. He is having a sharp sickle in his hand. What is going to do with the sickle? Harvest. Do the harvest work, dear brethren. Where is he going to do the harvest? Jesus is going to do the harvest in Temple, Mask Modinava. No, 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 no. He is going to do the harvest in the same field where his heart is sold. You see, it is among the Christians that Jesus is going to do the harvest, not among, you see, all the unbelievers who don't believe, no, Jesus Christ at all. Many Christians today, they don't know this truth at all. Instead of going and doing the harvest now, they are sowing, you see, for... Those people who don't know Jesus Christ or Hindus, Muslims, they won't preach the word of God. Saying we should preach or else they will go to hell. Dear brethren, there was a time to preach. You see, when? When the British ruled in all over the world, there was a very favorable time. A lot of opportunity was there to sow the seed. You see? But now it is not the condition. Now a lot of other religions are there. They have their own religion. Now if you go and preach, they will eat you. You see? We should be wise as serpents, sir. What did Jesus say? Huh? Cash not the holy unto the dogs. Sir. Don't put it before the swine. What will happen? The swine. The swine will tear you. Read Matthew 7 6. A Romy sister, can you read Matthew 7 6?
Oh, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest ye tremble them under the under feet, and run again and rend you. You see, don't put the holy thing before the dogs. Don't put it before the swines. What means the dogs and swines means? Unbelievers, sir. He that has ears, only preach to them. Don't just waste your time. You see, it's a waste of time, waste of energy. Jesus never did one. Jesus preached only to those who has ears. He that has ears, let him hear. He that has eyes, let him see. He did not shout loudly, everybody here, or else you're going to go to hell. Did he preach like that? Very calm Jesus was. He knew 4,000 people came. He, they ate well and they went off. Jesus knew that they had come only for eating. But <clears throat> Jesus was very cautious. Sir. So, Jesus tells us to also huh, to be like uh, serpents and be harmless as doves. Read Matthew 10, 16. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Matthew 10, 16? Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I sent you forth as sheep uh, in the midst, the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpent and harmless and doves. Mm, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Serpents, mm -hmm. you see? Harmless as doves. You should be very careful. When somebody came to hit Jesus, what did Jesus do? He told, oh, come, come, eat, please. God has told me to take all the persecutions. He clearly escaped. Only when he was supposed to die on the cross, he received all the beatings. We should also be very careful. When to take beatings, when to not take beatings. You see, Jesus is our master. We should follow the footsteps of Jesus. So hence, when Jesus at the second advent, now we are living in that period. We see at the first advent, there was two classes of people. One listened to the word of God, other didn't listen to the word of God. Similarly, now also, there are two types of people. One group of people accept the teachings of Christ. You see, and other people don't accept the teachings of Christ. Now, at the first advent, who was the one who opposed Jesus? It was not the local people. It was the Pharisees, Sadducees, the main, main, very, you see, high people. So similarly, the people who are against the truth, this truth, what you are listening, is not the lower Ordinary Christians, but these are the pastors, these are the reverends, these are the bishops, these are the leaders. You see, and what did they call Jesus as? They call Jesus, you know, huh? you fellow who gave you the permission to preach. Similarly, if you preach also, they will tell, oh, oh, oh what have you studied? Have you studied the theology? Where is your certificate? Isn't it? You see, but Jesus, he did not go to school at all. This is the two group of people who are living now. As Jesus did the separation at the first advent, similarly, Jesus is doing the separation with the sickle. Now, which is the sickle? Again, that sickle is the word of God. Now, what, is the, what will happen if the word of God comes? Matthew 10, chapter 34 to 39. Surita, sister, you're there? Can you read Matthew 10, chapter 34 to 39? Uh, she's on the washroom. I will okay. read. Okay, brother. Uh, please, brother. Please, brother. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at burdens against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the man's foes shall be the day of his own household. Ah, wait, brother. What does he say? I have not come here to bring peace, sir. Prince of Peace is telling, I am not coming to bring peace, sir. Why? He has come to bring the sword. The truth, the word of God, the sharp word of God, when he comes into the house, it will cause division. Because one person in the house will listen, other person in the house won't listen. You see, the father will listen, the son won't listen. So what will happen? There will be a division among the father and the son. Mother and the mother-in-law, mother and the daughter. You see, this is the effect of the truth. Because one will be the wheat, other will be the 
tear. Now what will happen to the tear? What did Jesus say? He will gather all the tear to burn in the fire. Again, the bundling means what? Uh, gathering together them in their own old faith. Fire means what? Uh, not little fire. Wheat itself is a symbolic meaning. That's a parable. So fire means destruction. And similarly, you see, and the gathering of the, you see, wheat means, uh, you see, gathering of God's children. Now, what does the parable say? Parable says, Jesus will send his angels to gather uh, this wheat uh, from one end of the earth to the other end. Now, the literally angels will come from heaven. What is the meaning of angels? Read Malachi 2.7. Malachi 2.7. Uh, Muna sister, can you read? Do you have the Bible? Malachi 2.7. Or else Gopal Buddha. Ah, okay. Read, read, read. Muna sister, read. For the priest lives should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. He is the messenger, the angel of the Lord of hosts. You see, the person who is having God's words in his mouth, he is the angel. So God is sending these angels who is having the truth in their mouth to preach and separate these two classes of people at the, the second. We are living in these days. So hence, uh, it is our responsibility to preach the word of God and gather as much as wheat as possible. Not go and preach to the unbelievers. Okay, now this is the gospel age harvest which happens at the end of the age. We are living at the end of the age, you know very well. After this one comes the millennial age. You see the thousand year reign of Christ. And there also one more harvest will happen. We have uh, studied uh, this one in a very simple manner, Matthew 25, chapter 31 to 41. We are not going to read the entire verse. Here, Jesus speaks about a parable where Jesus is going to come in his glory and sit up on the throne and he's going to gather the nations and separate the wheat and the, you see, so, sorry, separate the sheep and the goat. And we all know, here it tells that uh, 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 Jesus puts a question, you see, uh, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, thirsty you gave me water. When uh, I was naked, you clothed me. When uh, I was in prison, you came and visited me. And uh, this uh, people question, when Lord, when did we do all these things? Sir? Jesus tells, uh, whatever you do to the little of my brethren, it's like doing to me. So based on this scripture, so many people do this uh, hospitality work, like NGO work. Going and preaching uh, the word of God for the poor, giving them food, giving them water, clothing them, building a home for the age, you see, orphanages, and uh, you see, going and doing the ministry work uh, in the jail, you see, jail ministry. But uh, did ever Jesus do all these things? He never did all these things. Then why is he advising us to do it? Therefore, we should see the Bible. This verse actually is applicable in the kingdom, not now. Let us read Matthew 25, 31. Matthew 25, 31. Joel Buddha, read Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. You see, when Jesus is going to come in his glory, when? Hardly is come. He is going to come at the second advent. Then these verses will be fulfilled. Not now, dear brethren. So this will happen in the thousand year reign of Christ. When he is going to come, he is going to separate these two classes of people who are there in the world. The judgment is going to happen as the truth goes out to them. It is for the world. You see, it clearly says the whole world shall be gathered before him. And the world shall be separated, not the church. Church won't be there at all. You see, and uh, you see, this separation is going to happen. How? Not literally. Huh? That verse clearly says that Matthew 25, 34. Huh? Uh, the sheep people will be given the kingdom that was prepared from the foundation of the world, while the goat people will be destroyed in everlasting fire, which is reserved for the devil and the angels. So when Christ comes, the people as they obey the word of God, you see, and walk accordingly, 
they are developing one character or destroying one character you see that is what is symbolized here in by goat and wheat goat are a very stubborn you see animal you know very well goat is very stubborn animal it doesn't uh, bow down easily you see very strong animal but sheep is very docile animal very soft even if you take to the butcher home it will come silently trusting his master therefore jesus is compared to the sheep so sheep people are obedient children of god you see therefore dear brethren you see uh, all the people who are born from adam till the second advent of jesus uh, in this 6000 years uh, they will all come back in the resurrection you see when everybody comes back to life in the resurrection then how will they be they will be hungry without food what is the food jesus said man shall not live by food alone by bread alone but by the word of god they don't know anything about the truth for them the word of god should be given again the water means what you see water means the river of life you see god's truth you see that blessings has to be shared to these people who are rejected batch by batch you see and those people won't be having cloth also what is this cloth the robe of righteousness you see once if you accept christ only will be given the robe of righteousness this robe of righteousness will be given to the whole world by them accepting christ so the resurrected people which each and every batch comes will help the future coming batch to accept christ and have this food and drink of this water you see and uh, help them walk up the highway of holiness back to perfection you see hence uh, it says uh, that uh, i was sick you came and see sick means what uh, sin sick the whole world is suffering from sin once they come into the resurrection they will be having the old desires they leave they have to leave the sin that thing will be helped uh, by batch by batch people and uh, what will be the blessings what will be the punishment if you see it says was uh, uh, matthew 25 34 read brother matthew 25 34 what will be the blessings before that one let us read uh, matthew 25 uh, 41 matthew 25 41 muna uh, sister can you read matthew 25 41 Matthew 25 41 Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels Hmm depart from me on the left hand right and means chief favor left means apart from favor far from favor cursed <coughs> into the everlasting fire prepared for the angels and devil what is this everlasting fire everybody think there is lake of fire what is the meaning of lake of fire in the bible we are studied in the hell class revelation 20 verse 14 it says the lake of fire is second death read revelation 20 14 roshi sister can you read revelation 20 verse 14 and they and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death this is the second death so all those people who don't obey the word of god who show the character of the devil they will be destroyed in second death but what about the rest of the people matthew 25 34 anil brother read matthew 25 34 then shall the king king ye say unto them on his right hand come ye bless blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world see inherit the kingdom you see those on the right hand blessed of my father inherit the kingdom which is prepared for you from the foundation of the world which is this kingdom where is this kingdom it will be on earth let thy kingdom come let thy will be done on earth even as it is done in heaven then only this words will be fulfilled so this is the third harvest so three harvest each and every age there is a sowing there is a growing period then there is a harvesting period so jewish age harvest gospel age harvest and the millennial age harvest okay so kindly go to the notes any doubts any questions you have if anybody is having any questions they can ask